All right, hello everybody. Today I wanted to go over the very basics of how types work in TypeScript so that you can start using them in the programs you write. If you don't have TypeScript installed, please see my prior videos where I'll show you how to do that. I've started here with an empty folder in VS Code, though feel free to use any text editor of your choice as you follow along. Before we get started, we're going to open up a terminal and create a TypeScript configuration file by running tsc space hyphen hyphen init. We'll change one line for now. We're going to uncomment lib and add dom and es5. This will let us reference objects that exist when running JavaScript in a web browser, which I'll be using for examples later. Now let's create our main.ts file where we'll be doing everything today. And then we're going to go to terminal and click run task and do tsc watch to get TypeScript compiling our files. We're going to start off by specifying types on simple variables. There are three ways to declare variables in TypeScript and JavaScript, and that's with the var, let, and const keywords. In terms of specifying types, they all work exactly the same, so for this video I'll simply be using let. In a future video I'll cover the differences between var, let, and const, but like I said, for this video it doesn't matter. The first thing I want to touch on before we go much further is that TypeScript is really good at figuring out what the types of things are supposed to be without you needing to explicitly declare it. For example, you can see here in Visual Studio Code, we can figure out what the type of something is by hovering our mouse over it. And we see that it pops up and it knows about this variable. It says bar colon number, which means it's already figured out that this variable is a number. However, you'll often want to explicitly tell TypeScript what the type of something is. So that's what we're focusing on in this video. Now, as it turns out, that same syntax VS Code showed us is what you'll use to explicitly tell TypeScript what the type of something is. We can say here let bar colon number and TypeScript will start enforcing that this variable can only ever be a number. You'll see if we try to change this value to something else, we'll get a red underline and an error listed below that this string is not assignable to type number. And just to be clear, if we remove the colon number, we still get the same error because TypeScript is going to assume that once you assign a variable a value of one type, that it was probably a mistake to use any other type. Let's start with what the most basic types are in TypeScript. Booleans, numbers, and strings. A boolean can be either true or false. A number can be any number you like. And a string can be any text that you like. Building on top of these basic types, we can do arrays of things by specifying the type and then writing an opening and closing square bracket. There is an alternate syntax for writing arrays, though generally I don't see it used as often. Instead of using the square brackets, you write title case array, an angle bracket, the type contained in the array, and then a closing angle bracket. This is completely the same as the other syntax used above, and like I said, this is used much less commonly. So I say default to the first way unless you have a good reason to do otherwise. There's also a variation on arrays called a tuple. If you're not familiar with the term, you can think of it simply as an array with a fixed number of elements. Say there are two pieces of data that you always want to store next to each other, but you don't want to use a full object for whatever reason. You could do that with a tuple. For example, we could store student test scores as a tuple containing their name and the score. Here, Tom has a score of 97.5. And you can see that this is expecting just a string and a number. If we tried to add something extra to this, it's going to complain to us that we've created something that's not the size we said it would be, or if we try to remove a required element, TypeScript will also complain. Similarly, if we use the wrong type, it'll complain as well. To be clear, you can have an array of tuples by combining the same syntax as we just learned. So we'll have our tuple type followed by the opening and closing square brackets. And then we would fill it out like so, and TypeScript will enforce that all the types we use here are correct. Declaring our own objects is done in a very similar way to arrays. Let's say we're making a game and we have a player with an X position, a Y position, and some health. How would we do that in TypeScript? We'll start by declaring our player variable and then doing a colon and some curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets we can put the names and types of the fields we want to create. You'll see that this looks very much like the actual object value that we'll assign to the player object. If we accidentally put in the wrong type, or if we add a field that doesn't exist as part of the definition, TypeScript will complain at us. It'll often be the case that you'll want to reuse object definitions like this in multiple places, say if you had multiple players or various functions that manipulated player objects. 
There are two ways of doing this. The first and most direct way is to use the type keyword to define a new name that is equal to the type we defined for the player earlier. Then we can use that name in place of the full object definition for the player. Another option with very similar effects is to create an interface. You can do this by using the interface keyword followed by the name you want and then describe the types of fields for the object like we did earlier. We can use it as a type for our player in exactly the same way that we use the definition created by the type keyword. When is it appropriate to use type instead of interface? The answer is actually a bit too long for this video, so stay tuned for a future one where I'll cover that. For now, just use whichever one you feel most comfortable with. Now, going back to our example, you can see that I can now create a second player using the same type. And if I update the definition of the type, TypeScript will helpfully give us an error on both of them, indicating that they need to be updated to match the changes. This feedback loop is super common in development. You'll often notice some object that needs a new field or needs that field altered in some way. You can make that change in the central type definition and then go through and fix each of the places where TypeScript indicates that there's a problem. There's no need to worry about whether you updated every spot or not. TypeScript will let you know. Now is a good time to mention that in the same way that we created and used our own types above, we can use existing types that are part of JavaScript or JavaScript's environment. For example, because we used DOM in our lib section of tsconfig.json, we can create a variable and declare it that its type is HTML element. We could then fill this variable with something from the DOM API, like document.getElementById. Now you'll see here that TypeScript is complaining about our HTML element variable. Why is it doing that? Well, if we hover over document.getElementById, we'll see that its type is actually HTML element pipe null, and the pipe character there actually means or. So that's because if we specify an ID that doesn't exist on the page, this function is going to return null. Using the pipe character to join multiple types together creates what's called a union type, which is simply a fancy way of saying this variable could be a few different things. There's a lot more to union types and other related features in TypeScript that we'll cover in a future video. For now, just be aware that if you have a variable that could be a couple different types, you can list those types by separating them with the pipe character. Okay, so that covers the basics of built-in types and defining your own types, but there's a couple of catch-all types that I want to show you. The first one is an object, and that represents anything that isn't a basic type. So it'll be anything that isn't a boolean or a number or a string. For example, it could be HTML element or our player type or anything else. This is a type that I don't see used all that often because generally you either know what the object type is or you use the even more general any keyword. Any is exactly what it sounds like. If you say the type of your variable is any, you're saying that it can hold any value possible. Generally, if you're using TypeScript, I strongly recommend against reaching for any, unless you absolutely have to use it. Though, if you're interacting with non-TypeScript code, it can be appropriate to use any in order to deal with JavaScript libraries that truly can produce any value. Next up is talking about how to handle null, undefined, and how to use types with function definitions, but this video is already running a little long, so stay tuned for part two of this video. If you're enjoying what you're learning here, you might like the TypeScript course that I'm working on. Head on over to typescriptbyexample.com and you can put your email address in the form at the bottom of the page to be notified when it's ready. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.